Good morning and welcome to Algebra 1A. Today I'm going to go over the two worksheets that I gave you guys to practice for your test. And this will be uh, in large part your test review with the addition of the absolute value equations we've done very recently. So the first problem gave you the question three, whoops, that's not gonna be a good one. Let's try it again. Three parentheses, two X minus six plus four equals 10. I know that it was a little bit different than the problem written up here, but who cares? Let's just go with the one that was in the box. So the thing was you had to tell me what to do, but also the reason behind it. Don't forget the six reasons we have that allow us to do everything we're doing. They are the properties of equality, which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, as well as combined like terms and the distributive property. So there's more than one way we can begin, but most of you, I think, did the distribution. So three times two X is six X minus three times six is 18 plus four equals 10. The reason? the distributive property. I'm going to abbreviate, but you know what I'm saying. Now, there's more than one thing we could do next, but because I see a negative 18 and I see a plus four, I just want to combine them. They are like terms, and negative 18 plus four is negative 14 equals 10. The reason? Again, combine like terms. And now we move on to the next step. I need to get x by itself, which is always our goal. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides of the equation. If I add 14 to both sides, I get 6x equals 24. And the reason for that was the addition property of equality. Again, whenever you do something to both sides of an equation, it's a property of equality. We add it, so it's the addition, property of equality. And now because I want to get x by itself, I divide by six. And 24 divided by six is four. What did I just do? The division property of equality. And the prompt is done. So solving it in this way, we didn't do the subtraction or multiplication property of equality, but we did the other four, which is all we have to do. You don't have to use every single property, obviously. Moving on. It said solve and show your work. We have one half parentheses two x plus four equals negative six. Well, we could distribute that one half without too much trouble. One half times two x is one x, or just x. One half times four is two, so it's plus two equals negative six. I'm going to subtract two from both sides and I get x equals negative eight. Any questions or problems, you let me know. But that looks like it's the answer. Moving on to the next problem. Two parentheses, three x minus nine equals six x. We can distribute, no problem. Two times three x is six x. Minus two times nine is 18 equals over here, six X. I have X variable on both sides, so I'm gonna subtract that from both sides. So I get to remove it there. Negative 18 equals, well, hey, that cancels also. The number is zero. There's no more variable term, but the resulting values are false. I mean, obviously negative 18 does not equal zero. That tells us there is no solution. That's a special system, special equation rather. No solution. And that brings us to the next problem, which is 15 plus two times x minus one equals 13 plus two x. First thing is do not add 15 plus two. Don't do that. The reason is that two is being held onto this quantity with multiplication. And if you remember PEMDAS, multiplication is more important than addition or subtraction. We can't combine 15 plus two. What we can do is distribute the two though. 15 plus two X minus two equals 13 plus two X. I'm gonna subtract two X from both sides. 
so I can get them on one side, but as it turns out, 15 minus two is left here, 13, that also cancels. 15 minus two is 13. I got a solution where the variable disappeared, but the numbers that are left over are true. 13 does equal 13. That means that there are infinite solutions infinite solutions. If you don't tell me when it's a special case, if you don't say infinite solutions, or if you don't say no solution, you don't really get full credit for that prompt because that's what it's telling you. So you have to report that finding. Moving on, solve with proportions x plus one over three equals four over five. We use our butterfly method. We multiply diagonally. Four times three, that's 12, equals, don't forget to fully do this, it's five times x plus one. I'm gonna write it that way because I wanna to remember to make the full distribution, which I'll do now. 12 equals five x plus five. Subtract 5 from both sides to get the x closer to being by itself. 12 minus 5 is 7, equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5 to get x by itself. x equals 7 fifths. You could say also that's 1 and 2 fifths, or you could say that's 1.4, or just leave it at 7 fifths. And also, while we're here, we'll do the other one. 1 fourth equals 4 over 2x. Again, we're going to solve this proportion with cross products, the butterfly method. And I get 2x times 1, that's 2x, equals 4 times 4, that's 16. Divide by 2, and x equals 8. How are we doing so far? Hopefully we're doing all right. The next side, two-thirds x equals four. This says clear the fraction and solve. To clear a fraction, we multiply by the denominator. That's the number three. I'm gonna multiply by three. Here's what happens, okay? When I multiply by the denominator, it cancels out that denominator. So this is two x. And it equals 3 times 4, because we are distributing, and that's a 12. Divide by 2 on both sides, x equals 6. Last question on this page. 1 fifth equals 7x. It wants us to clear the fraction, which again means to multiply by the denominator, which is 5. 5 times 1 fifth is just 1, equals 5 times 7x is 35x. You divide by 35, and x is just 1 35th. So far, so good. Now there's a couple of extra practice with proportions. Let's try those. 2x minus 4 over x equals 3 fourths. Multiply on the diagonal. 3x equals, this is 4 times 2x minus 4. I'm going to distribute that. So 3x equals 8x minus 16. Subtract 8x from both sides. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. x equals negative 16. Divide by negative 5. And x equals a negative over a negative is positive. And you could say 16 fifths if you want. Or you could divide that. 5 goes into 16 three times with 1 fifth left over. Or you can call that 3.2. The last thing on this page. Two-thirds, x minus five equals 10. This is clear the fraction. So I'm gonna multiply this by three to clear the fraction. 
and there's nothing wrong with doing that this way. That clears the fraction, so we have two parentheses, x minus five, no, it does not multiply into here, equals 30. Okay, now we can distribute 2x minus 10 equals 30. Let's add 10 to both sides. 2x equals 40, divide by 2, and x equals 20. Okay, if you remember from the quiz, these kinds of questions were extra credit. Please understand that on the test, I'm not going to give you anything you can't handle. So things that are more challenging will either be extra credit again, or they just won't be there. Okay, that brings us to the last page, which only has four more problems. So let's get this done and then we can go on and have a nice weekend. X minus one is less than or equal to nine. Just add one to both sides so that we can get x is less than or equal to 10. The number line graph has 10 in the middle as our anchor point. We have 9 and 11 on either side as reference points. It's a closed dot above the 10, and less than or equal to means it goes to the left, and that's the answer to the first problem. Let's do the second problem. Negative 2x plus 4 is less than negative 10. Going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I get negative 2x is less than negative 14. Divide both sides by negative 2. Now what that does is it gets x by itself, but it also is going to flip the symbol because we divided by a negative number. And negative 14 over negative 2 is 7. So it's greater than 7. So seven is my anchor point. I have six and eight on opposite side. Greater than is an open dot with an arrow to the right. And that's the solution to this prompt. Don't forget, whenever you divide by a negative number on an inequality, it has to flip the inequality symbol around. Now that takes us to our compound inequalities. We have x plus eight is greater than 12 or 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Remember that or does not mean you have your choice as to what you're going to solve. It means that the inequalities could be on one side or the other, and we have to solve for both. Over here, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides for a pretty quick answer. x is greater than 4. Over here, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides and get 3x is less than or equal to negative 6. And then I divide by 3, and I get x is less than or equal to negative 2. So those are my solutions, my anchor points on my graph. So here's my number line. I got negative 2 and positive 4. The positive 4 is an open dot because it says greater than. So open dot greater than is going to the right. The negative 2 is a closed dot because it says less than or equal to, and that goes to the left. That's our solution and our graph. That problem is now complete. One prompt to go. Negative 8 is less than or equal to x minus 10, which is also less than 6. So for this problem, it's in between two inequality symbols, and what that meant was we're looking at an intersection, a graph in which the dots connect, because all the values of x that work are between those two values. We've got to solve first before we graph it, though. To get x by itself, I'm just going to add 10 to get rid of it. However, I have to add 10 to all of the other areas as well. Negative 8 plus 10 is 2, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6 plus 10, which is 16. I got the x by itself, and now I just have to graph it. Those two values are my anchor points, 2 and 16. That's a closed dot above the 2. That's an open dot above the 16. And I already told you that when x is between the two values, we're generally just going to connect them together. No arrowheads necessary. X values are more than 2, but less than 16. So far as the two worksheets go, that's it.
um, your test is mostly on that material. Again, we're also adding to that the uh, uh, literal equations, which weren't on these sheets just now, and the um, absolute value that we have to be able to solve for. Um, if you want an example of a literal equation, I'll give you one now. Quick example. Ready? Area equals length times width. And you have to solve for length. All that means is get the L by itself. Since L is being multiplied by W, we just want to divide by W to get the L by itself. If I divide by W on both sides, the W's cancel, and L is by itself, and it equals A divided by W. The area of a rectangle divided by its width is equal to its length, and that's what that tells you. Okay? Also, there's absolute value. I'll give you one example of that. Since we're here, and it's already been 16 minutes, might as well make it an 18. Uh, what is, let's say, um, two absolute value x plus 1 less than 10. Please understand that absolute values are kind of like parentheses when they're next to a number. It means that they have to multiply. But I also don't want to multiply into absolute value. We want to avoid multiplying into absolute value. So how can we undo a multiplication problem? Well, the easiest thing to do is division. Um, also, we just did the equation, so I'm going to make that an equal sign. We didn't talk about the inequality. Don't worry about that. That's just going to be an equal sign. I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. That cancels out the 2. Absolute value x plus 1 equals 10 divided by 2, which is 5. The absolute value quantity is now by itself. And I have to make two problems. One that says x plus 1 equals 5. And the other says x plus 1 equals negative 5. Now I solve for both, subtract 1 from both sides, x equals 4. Subtract 1 from both sides, and x equals negative 6. And that's it. All right, that's the review for your test. That's everything you need. Please understand that when you take your at-home portion of the test, use a calculator, use your brain, you want to use this video as a guideline, you can, but not while you're in school for that portion of the test. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we will do a little bit more review on Monday and then hopefully be ready for that test on Tuesday and Wednesday. Have a great weekend.